In an age of televised three-minute sound bites and superficiality beyond your imagination, we are taking you back to the long-form interview. Does that scare you? You're really going to get to know the people that we're talking to. You're going to meet a woman who has made her own career by sheer force of will, desire, and motivation. This is a woman who is focused. It is a woman who knows who she is and what she wants in life. And more importantly, this is a young lady who is truly in love with her husband and her young son. It is a warm portrait of a family making their way in the wild and crazy world of Hollywood. Come with me now. When I got here, John took me on a quick tour of your house. Oh, no. And when we got into the study, I admired... The garbage? No, not the garbage, but there was that, too. <laughs> I admired the pictures on the wall that were magazine covers. And you know what he said? That John, I hate them up there. He said, you hate those pictures. They're narcissistic. You don't want them. It's your career. What bothers you? John always bugs me to put my pictures and covers on the wall, but for some reason I just think it's very narcissistic and he makes fun of me with that word, but I don't know, I just feel like, look at me, but then a friend of mine said, you know, it's kind of a look back to all the work that you did and maybe as I get older, I wouldn't mind, you know, putting pictures up, look at me when I was 21. America loves Jenny McCarthy. Men love Jenny McCarthy. Women love Jenny McCarthy. Kids love Jenny McCarthy. Why do you think they love Jenny McCarthy? God, that is a really hard question to answer, but I can tell you that, if anything, I've always tried to be honest, um, and I've always tried to stick up for the girls. It all started when I first did my MTV show, and it was a dating show with men and women, and I kind of, you know, made fun of the guys and cheered for the girls, and I think that's how I try to do my career, is kind of, you know, yeah, smile and tease the boys, but be on the girls' team. How do you feel as her husband? Is she on your team or is she on the girls' <laughs> team? Oh, man. Nah, she's on my team. Uh -huh. She's on my team. Honestly, I think uh, I can answer the question for you, honey. Really? Why people like you. Yeah. I think because you connect, you know, you connect with people. I feel like Jenny always connects with people. The first day I met her, you know, there was the connection between us, but everybody feels that way. You know what I mean? You meet her and you feel like, Wow, this, this could be my best friend. And my description is, you know, a truck driver with tits. That's what I say. You know That's what I mean? That's why I married him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's like a badass, you know. It's like, I don't know. I could drink with the guys is what I can say, but still go shopping with the ladies. And I understand that you do that on poker night here in your home. Love, love. He used to have poker night, and it would drive me kind of crazy because I kind of felt left out a little bit. And then I realized, if you can't beat him, join him. So I learned how to play, and I've been loving it. Now she's beating them. Texas hold. Yeah. You said something a minute ago that I picked up on. Uh-oh. You try and be honest with everything you do. Someone said to me once, because everyone tries to give you advice on your career, and I remember someone saying, you know, you really need to be more mysterious. Mysterious is, people want mystery, and I thought, I don't. It drives me crazy. It's like... I don't want to guess, I just want to be truthful and honest, and if any of my stories or anything I say can help people because I tell the truth, great. What's the weirdest advice anybody ever gave you, besides being mysterious? Um, to get into drama. <laughs> to get into drama? <laughs> to, you know. You mean like heavy, dramatic yeah, films? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have, of course, when I moved out here, tested the waters of but there's, there's nothing like comedy. The experts say comedy is much harder as a performer. Why? Why is it harder for you? I don't think it is. I think, I think comedy is, is easy, drama is easier. It's all just delivery and timing. And it's like, if it's there, great. Has it always been there? I think so. I mean, I never really studied it. So I can't say it came from anywhere other than 12 years of Catholic school. <laughs> that's drama. That is dr that's sheer drama. It's drama that turned into comedy. Because I, no. you saw it that way. Yeah. What about you? Mm. What advice do you give your wife? John, you're a big time Hollywood director. Can you separate your personal relationship from your professional? Can you tell her, for example, if she's really sucky, can you say, this isn't funny, let's mm. do it again? Or does she have the instinct to know herself? This is an interesting story. Um, I 
met Jenny when I was directing Diamonds, and she was flawless. Wasn't that the movie with uh, Kirk, Douglas, Kirk Douglas and was Lauren, it Lauren Bacall? Lauren Bacall and Dan Aykroyd, and it was a great experience because I was working with them, but I also met my wife. Was that your first big feature film? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was 26. And uh, I met Jenny, and she walked onto the set, and she said, I love you, I'm going to marry you. And that pretty much, <clears throat> I had no comments for her on her performance then. You know what I mean? Because we were falling in love. How did you fall in love with him on first sight on a movie set? All I can say on falling in love with someone at love at first sight is the universe making it that way. I was in a really horrible relationship at the time. I wasn't looking for anybody. And he walked in the door. And it was like electricity hit me. So that's when I believe in destiny. Because I was going to give up love. How long have you been married? It's going on five years. Five years is coming up, yeah. One child, Evan, almost two. Mm -hmm. I hear you're like the world's best mom. Is that a big lie or no, is that honest? that's completely true. I think I am. And I will take that and run with it. I mean, I never had a full-time nanny. I don't have a full-time babysitter. Um, I do it, we pretty much do it all ourselves unless we're working, then we'll have someone come in or take Evan to work with us. Um, but I just love him. I love him more than anything in the whole world and that comes first. What about division of duties besides taking out the trash and walking the dog? We rotate what every about morning. You? We rotate every morning. I'm terrible to wake Horrible. up. I'm the worst. Horrible. I don't know why that is in me, but he's, I'm very... Since you were a spoiled Hollywood kid, you didn't get up till noon That's your whole true. life. What are you talking about? Why is but it But he's so here? out of it. Let me give you an example. <laughs> he's, so, he's so out of it. When I wake up, I go, John, your turn to get the baby. You know what he says? Oh. What are you talking about? What baby? <laughs> but I must say... Yeah. Come up with something quick. <laughs> he is an amazing father. Yeah. In what way? What's the best thing he does? He loves Evan so much and gives him so much one-on-one -on -one time. And they're buddies. When sometimes when I go in to get him from his nap, he'll go look over my shoulder and go, "Where's Daddy? Where's Daddy?" I'm like, "It's Mama." No, where's Daddy? I mean, it just proves right there that he loves him so much, and he does share equal time. So take me on a tour. A, a mini tour. Mini, mini tour. tour. This is the dining room. Let me get out of the way. You know, usually I have big, giant, fresh flowers, but I've been too busy. So, what you see is. Dried fake ones. Who picked out the, who picked out the furniture? <laughs> me. I, it's all me. It's all I, you. What about I, the rug? The rug, rug looks me. like an antique. It is an antique, but believe it or not, I get it at a flea market. I'm a big flea market girl. Does that mean you're frugal? No, it means I'm smart. I like that answer. <laughs> Any um, significance to the picture on the wall? No, just I was in Italy, and um, I didn't have a lot of money for artwork when I first came out here. And on the street, they were selling these women on haystack prints for a quarter. <laughs> and I bought one. And then I framed it in a nice frame and told everyone it came from Italy. Well, which it did. <laughs> so does that make me cheap or smart yet again? And it cost a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> eventually, eventually. Well, I of course, over here we have a Renoir, but we, yeah. won't, we won't we go, won't go there. That, we won't that go was there. only a nickel in Italy. True stories in Italy. <laughs> You know, you sound like two people in love that could be in anywhere America talking about their baby. Oh, yeah. We're completely normal mom, dad, clean up the poo-poo diaper people. <laughs> so what about the crazy world out there that isn't so normal, the Hollywood world? It isn't normal. No. And that's not just because it's today. It's always been like that. Yeah. It's always been like that. What kind of friends do you have? They're n normal people. I what mean is normal? I mean, what is normal? I, I, childhood. I have I have childhood friends that I went to high school with. A friend of mine, Brad Buckley, who now is in real estate. So I have normal, normal, normal friends. Is in normal we don't every have day. We any celebrity friends. None. <laughs> the mailman is the big celebrity that comes over. That's about it. Yeah. You know what's weird is Evan looks just like the mailman. Oh, that's so old. <laughs> is it? <laughs> <laughs> I told you, comedy's hard. That's the whole thing Life about is comedy. Hard too. That's what I was going to say about comedy what? and drama. You make people cry by throwing a cat in front of a bus, and the cat gets run over. But teach the cat how to dance. That's hard. <laughs>
and sliced Polish sausage and went out to college for about two years to Southern Illinois University and um, the cops were at my door to arrest me for bouncing checks for food. Um, so I crawled out my window, got in my car, drove six hours back to Chicago, moved back in with my mom and dad and said, I'm trying, I'm trying acting. So I went downtown and met with some agents. They all said, you'll never ever make it. You because? Because, I mean, I went downtown talking like this. I had a really strong Chicago accent. I'm like, I want to do commercials. And they're like, oh, honey, no, 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 no. So um, I would not, I could not get hired in Chicago and thought, oh my God, I'm $20,000 in debt. I need to get to Hollywood. Across the street was the Playboy building. And thought, oh, I'm extremely Catholic. I can't do it. Decided to go, the devil made me do it is what I say. Went up the elevator, talked to somebody. They said, you want to try a test shoot? Was Just, that the receptionist? Yes. <laughs> well, she was, actually the editor was walking by, another like universal plan, and said, hey, why don't you try a bathing suit shoot? Did it, went home, the answering machine said, you're Miss October. Shot it, waited until the issue came out, moved out to Los Angeles, and started working, and a year later got MTV. You said you always wanted to be an actress. You grew up wanting to be a star. Mm -hmm. Was that because you were a beautiful child with a pretty <laughs> face? What made you think that you could be, should be, would be a star? I have no idea. All I know is from the time I was four or five years old, people say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I'd say, a movie star. I want to be a star. Baby, what does that on, mean? She used to put on shows in her basement. I used to put on shows in my yeah, basement. Yeah, but so did you. Well, I know, but that's different. I mean, Why? My, well, because my dad was a director, and I knew about it, and I was around it all well, the time. Well, all the kids were playing, like, so. school. Um, I was putting on shows and making up, you know, like invitations. What? Do you remember what show? Did I, you have like a favorite act? This is what the, the pizza cutter. Killer. Well, that was a film I did. I did a little home movie called The Revenge of the Pizza Cutter Killer. It was a horror flick. All right, so the horror genre with you takes its roots in early age. And it was a, com a full-blown comedy horror flick. It was great. Obviously, was if it's The Revenge screen. of the Pizza Cutter, yeah, yeah. What but, made you do that? Just so wanted to get in front of a lens. This is very Steven Spielberg. Yeah. He did the same thing. Or very Ed Wood. <laughs> <laughs> More Ed <Yeah>. Wood. <laughs> well, your sister, this is jumping a bit, but your sister's still with you. She's still right by your side. Both of them. Both of them. Then and now, that has never changed, no matter what has happened. Your family unit is very tight. This is not usual. One sister makes it big and well, we'll see you at Thanksgiving, honey, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Not you. So not me that I moved both sisters out here, <laughs> and one of them is my makeup artist that does all my shows, and the other one is my stand-in. So, and my brother-in-law is my manager. So you can't get any more yeah, and you made mafioso your sister than that. moved to the valley, so she'd be close to us. <laughs> I know. Now, really close. your parents are not together. No. I know you're really close to your mom. What about your dad? Really close to my dad. Really close. Love him. Love him to pieces. Is your mom out here or she's, no, she's still in I'm Chicago? I'm trying. She's my, she's my last science project of trying to drag the family out to L.A. Eventually. Eventually we'll get her here. When you add on another wing? That's actually being done. This is, um, this is a redone kitchen by my husband, he John. Said, he said he did it. He painted the cabinets, he did the floor. He did, and put in some wood counters. I am so not a cook, which that makes me a little bit less, I think, of a perfect mom. No, it doesn't. But when he's older and when he's 16, I'm gonna make those lasagnas. It's perfect, I'm washing dishes, and look, I get to see a swing set. I don't know if you can see my view, this is very perfect. good, very good mother planning. It is. You don't have to go far to get the kid. Can, can you see it? Can you see it? I'm not sure. See, look at it. See, that shows the good mom in me. <laughs> it's all open. I like this so I can see my baby in each room. So, I, you know, there's no guessing where Evan is. Quite a fireplace. I don't think they'll shoot it because all their equipment is yeah, there. Yeah, all the equipment's there. And the Now, the big monitor. screen monitor. Ladies and gentlemen, this is hooked up to other rooms in the house so they can watch where the child is. Here he is. What are, what are you You're not mic'd. You can't talk. What are you guys doing here? here? Talk here. Well, what's going on? We're having a tour. What is this? We're having Bye, a tour. I love you. Why are there cameras in our house? Remember, tonight's sex night. Oh, my God. Bye. <laughs> in his dreams, maybe. What time? <laughs> what time? <laughs> Maybe on the seventh year itch we'll include you. But for right now, we're, we're going to take it solo. Thank you. 
You just did a pilot for a new television show. Tell us about it. It's called The Bad Girl's Guide. And is it a reality show? No, it's a sitcom. And it's based off of a book series called The Bad Girl's Guide. Who is it for? Um, it's for UPN. And it is six years of doing pilots, actually. And this one is the one. Because? Because there was no pressure. The entire weight of the show isn't on Jenny's shoulders. And secondly, it's a chance for her to be herself and not have to be someone that she's not. And I think, when, like we talked about earlier, the honest side of Jenny, when that comes out, that's the funny Jenny that everybody knows and loves. And that's what you had the opportunity to do in this, this show. This is the first right? time I played a character that's just like me. When we came in, the sign on your gate says, enter with a happy heart. I know you put that there. <laughs> I wish I can <laughs> take that compliment, but it came with the house. <laughs> oh, did it really? Yeah, it came with the house, but the good news is we left it up. We did. I looked at it and went, oh, it's so sweet. I do want people to enter with a happy heart. So I take that, it that I left the it. House. It did. It was there. <laughs> that's so that's what, I think that's why we bought the house. There was like other fancier, schmancier houses, but this one felt so homey and family. Okay, so getting back, if making those big bucks is not the real motivation, and it's the work and the pleasure of the work. What about the glamour that you mentioned? Where is the glamour if you've really got to struggle and fight every day with the agents and the managers and the studios and the blah, blah, blah? Where is the glamour of Hollywood today? Does it exist? I think it's all fake. I'm is it I, I, fake different now than it used to be? See, completely, you grew completely, up in a Hollywood it's house. It's completely different. What's here's the, the difference? All right, here's the difference. And I won't go back that far, but I'll go back as far as Whoopi Goldberg, let's say. When she would walk down the red carpet, everybody was taking her picture because she's a funny gal. And she made everybody laugh, and you were like, wow, she's great, let's get a picture of her, right? But there wasn't a bunch of wannabe actors or people that weren't quite as talented as her trying to get their photograph taken as well. They were happy to see her, if this is making sense. Now, in today's Hollywood, if you can get your picture taken multiple, multiple times and you can be interviewed and you can be caught with the sex tape on the internet, all of a sudden you're a star. And I feel like it's a weird, all of a sudden, that's, if you're calling that, that's, the, the, that's the, the goal, that's a weird goal to have, to get to a place where it's just overexposure. And all of a sudden when you have the over, overexposure, you get the big paychecks and you start making more money than you can possibly imagine. That's what makes the difference. You know what I mean? It's not what it used to be. I mean, becoming a star, you know, De Niro, I mean, you look at that guy and you're like, that guy can really act. There's someone that can act. Or Leonardo DiCaprio, there's someone that can act. But he's not out there trying to get the Hollywood exposure. You know? And there's too much of it. It's crazy. It's almost the flavor of the second. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. And that's why things don't last. So do you want to last? Yeah. I know that for a fact that I will. Um, when I first started, there was a huge explosion of myself. <laughs> People said it was going to be maybe six months. And 10 years later, I'm still doing a show, I have a book coming out, I'm still here. What about you, John? Are you going to still be directing? Like I said, I don't, this business is so trippy and weird. I have no idea. I manage a band, I'm directing, I'm writing, acting. and I'm acting. So you got to gotta be all over it. Well, I've got, yeah, I've got irons in all the ovens. Unfortunately, I'm overcooking everything. So I feel like, you know, <laughs> the great like thing here. is he looks so young that I, he's he's got like an extra ten years beyond everybody else. Okay, let's talk about this book for a second. When I was pregnant, I went. I had him go actually. Go and get me everything there is on pregnancy, and all these books were on the shelf that he actually bought me. All of them were so technical, and nothing told the kind of raw truth. And of course, I found a very funny way of expressing what I went through in this book. Um, so it's kind of what to expect when you're expecting the Jenny McCarthy version, the raw version. Does it touch on, um, on the emotions of going through the process of childbirth, or is it just the funny moments that it's people It's symptoms experience? and mixed with emotions. So you must have gained 100 pounds. I gained 75 pounds. The thing is, I had so many things happen to me during my pregnancy with all this. I, I had every symptom possible. What do you mean, things happen? Um, I had ribs pop out. I had face rashes. I went through premature labor. Um, my boobs were like 74 double 
F's, um, and That's stretch marks, those and were, those were. nose clogging, and, and those, I mean, everything. And I realized I went through everything so I can write this book that people, if you know anyone that's pregnant, it will make them have a huge belly laugh. Is there anything in here you'd like to read? No, I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a good stuff in here. Pick a paragraph. You got to read. Well, here, right here. I want to write. Not that. This is the back. Uh, you, this is table we can be read wrong. Read from inside the book. This is from inside the book. Oh. Weight gain. This is a little section about weight gain. My breasts became so out of control, huge and heavy, that I actually weighed them. I have a food scale, and I just had to know how they compare to a meal. So I plopped a breast up on the little metal tray. Each breast, five pounds. That's ten pounds of breast. There are guys in this world who might disagree. To me, that's totally insane. <laughs> True story. So what did you do to lose the weight? Um, and how long did it take? Well, I tried to do the Hollywood thing and get a trainer, and that lasted about a week. Because? I wanted to be with my baby. I didn't want to leave. Um, and then I tried dieting really hard, like the Hollywood way, which was sashimi, sashimi, sashimi. And that didn't work. And then finally, I did the Midwest diet. I joined Weight Watchers. Your life is in a really nice place. You have so much going for you. Wonderful family, great career, you're in love. The world is not such a nice place. What is your greatest concern? Fear for the future of my son. And it sounds like an answer the president's wife would give. But now I get it. Now that it I'm a mom. It sounds like an answer that any mother would give. I just, I do, it's like I, I, I live for him now. It's like I, I work for his future. And it's when you see what's going on around you and how we all live in fear now of terrorism, it terrifies me. And I just want to keep his bubble safe. And I don't know how, and that scares me. What about you, John? What bothers you the most in our world today? The, you... Honestly, the environment. I mean, I know it's a cheesy thing. I'm not like a Greenpeace guy. I'm not going to chase down a boat. But, you know, I grew up most of my life surfing, and I can't even surf at the spots I used to when I was a kid, and that's only 10 years. Like you can't paddle out. You know, Malibu, Malibu Beach, you can't paddle out because the sewage is too bad. You're going to get sick when you go in the water. What so, do we do? How do we change that? How does an ordinary person make a difference? I think it works with the big company guys. The big, big companies, the Kmarts and the, the General Motors, those people need to be the ones that put their foot down. Last question. Mm -hmm. A big part of your fame and your career, at least the launch, was the Playboy experience. You're older, you're in a different place. I have a feeling I know the answer to this, but I'll ask it anyway. Any regrets? I'd do it all over again in a second. 